So today we are looking at new releases once more. We're looking at putting with the pin in and we're also looking at an exciting invite onto the PJ Tour. Hi guys, my name is Peter Finch and this is Finch Weekly, your weekly look at everything to do with golf. If you are new to the channel guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button and please comment below on everything that you see in today's video. This is interactive, this is about sharing your ideas and your thoughts so we can all learn together. So we are going to start with putting and specifically putting with the flag in. So this is one of the new rules that has been brought in this year and there's been a lot of debate and fours and against the argument of actually leaving the flag in however there is a recent article on my golf spy which is very good and very enlightening as far as this subject is concerned so if you go to the my golf spy website and actually have a look at this article it's very detailed and i do recommend it but i'm just going to pull out the highlights here so you can get an idea and a flavor of what they found now some context to this article and it is quoted within this article as well the different opinion of the tour players so the very best players in the world what are they thinking Thinking about this. Bryson DeChambeau has spoken about how he's going to lead the flag in for most putts. Justin Thomas talking about how he can't quite take himself seriously as a golfer if he leads the flag in. We're also going to get back to pros taking themselves too seriously and not doing maybe what works the best. But anyway, to the putting. So to go into the article and to quote it, they basically tested this against two different flag rigidities and about what would happen when the ball actually made contact and they broke it down into two very very cool um tables which are very very visual i'll show them now and it's basically tested them against the flag stick puts with the pin in and out tested both on center strikes and off center strikes and they did this with a perfect put machine which is basically a device that you just put the ball on roll it down and it, it gives you an accurate put time after time with a consistent speed and they've also done a full youtube video on this as well and i'll leave the link to that in the description below so what it basically showed is that with every single put measured every single one from different distances at different speeds it was always always a statistical advantage statistical advantage to actually leave the flag in and it basically showed that not only was this the case on puts that went in also the case on the putts that missed they actually finished closer to the hole because that flag was effectively acting as a backstop for those slightly fast putts and this is something that i have anecdotally found within the last few weeks i have not conducted a test of this scale and of this quality and it's a really good test my goals by guys were very well done but I've kind of noticed in the past few weeks when I've got out on the course, when I've done a bit of play and practice, I've hit some pretty hard putts that have smacked the center of the flag and stayed in that would otherwise not have stayed in. And the only thing that I'm not 100% sure on, and I'm not entirely sure this test actually covers it, is what happens when it's windy. So I played at Formby today, and there was a few putts where the wind was blowing, the flag was moving around. How does that affect putts? I'm really not too sure. But from what I found and from what this test have found, I think you're probably going to be more advantage leaving the flag in if you can overcome the fact that I would say that there is a thing of when you put with the flag in, it does make you feel a little bit like a beginner golfer again. However, what I would say is that this is something that I will get over and I think I will put most of the time with the flag in this year because at the end of the day, if it's giving you that statistical advantage over a course of a round, it might not make a huge amount of difference over the course of a season. It will probably make quite a large one. But as always, please comment below what do you think about the rule change and what do you think about these findings. And the next releases that we're going to be talking about are PXG. Kaboom, baby! So these are the PXG 0811X, the XF Gen 2 Drivers, the 0341X Woods, and they feature hot rod technology. Of course they do. So the driver, it has a carbon crown, so something that you've seen from quite a lot of manufacturers now, just trying to save weight. Um, the styling of this uh, is in the shape of a 500 horsepower Shelby Mustang, apparently. So this is reading from a Golf WRX article, the sleek new multi-level crown not only packs a new and improved aerodynamic design, but also provides structural support to the face where it is most needed. That's according to PXG. So they talk about the reducing drag on the club as it moves through the air, so something which has been spoken about for clubs uh, over the last few years as they try and make them a little bit faster. The company describes a pleasant and unique feel and sound reminiscent to a persimmon wood-headed driver. 
And by all accounts, the people that have tested this driver so far say it is pretty legit, to be fair. They say it's going to go a long way, it's low spinning, and the ball speed is pretty fast. It also looks really good from the top, I have to say. It looks pretty mean. And I think what is relatively interesting about this driver, and something that you're seeing throughout the driver market at the moment, this has got a starting price of $575. So it's going to be around the 500 quid recommended retail price. And what's really interesting about that is that actually drops the PXG driver down into what the other major manufacturers are actually pitching their drivers at. And this is very much a case of other manufacturers moving their drivers up to the price point of the PXG and PXG slightly lowering what their standard offering is. And that's interesting in a few ways because I've got to be honest, although PXGs are, well, I was going to say overpriced, but the fact is that golf clubs are only worth what people are willing to pay for them. So, and this is something also, if you don't like the price of monodrivers, if you're not happy with how much they're costing, remember, golf operates in a free market economy. If you don't like the prices of new drivers, then, well, you know, don't buy them. And that's what I actually quite liked about PXG is the performance of their golf clubs, what I've tested and what I've seen is very much in line with the other major manufacturers. So they're a good performing club. There's no doubt about that. You know, they are up there with the TaylorMades, with the Callaways, with the other major manufacturers as far as performance is concerned. But what I liked about them is that when someone bought a set of PXGs, it was about, it was about that thing about having them in the bag when no one else did. You know, it was about that status symbol. It was about saying, oh, look what I've got. I've got some PXGs. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. And not only did people who bought PXG irons, for example, or the driver, they didn't just stop at that. The people who were buying PXGs were buying the irons, the wedges, the woods, the bags. They were going all in. Now, whether you think that's stupid or not, that's not for you to say. It's the people who were buying the clubs. I just think it's quite interesting now that that price differential has kind of stopped. You know, that they're, they're even to each other now. And what that means for PXG, well, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Does that mean that they're confident enough now to actually bring out a cheaper product? A cheaper product? Or are they feeling that they're not quite getting enough clientele? Are they feel that they need to drop the price to try and attract more people? I'd be love to know your thoughts and if you've actually tried this new product. And that takes us to what is happening on social media in golf. And we're going to talk about just one person today. And that is the fisherman swing himself. Mr. Ho Sung Choi. Now, if you've not seen this guy swing, it is something to behold. It is absolutely fantastic. But I wouldn't just say it's his swing. I would say it's his whole approach to golf because he does this on his putting as well. If you don't know what we're talking about, here are some clips of his swing coming up right now. So Choi's 45. He only actually started playing at the age of 25. And I'll need to dig down a little bit more into his past. This Golf Digest article here is basically saying that I took up golf at the age of 25 after a hard life. I'm fully aware that none of this would be possible without the love and support of my fans. I will, of course, do my best wherever I go. And he's been invited to play in the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. And I'm speaking from my personal opinion here, but certainly Tiger Woods, when he plays, I want to watch that tournament. I will want to watch Pebble Beach because this guy is playing. To see someone that unusual and that strange as far as how he goes about approaches his golf it's going to be fantastic to see and this goes back to a little bit about what justin thomas was saying before about not being able to take himself seriously if putting the flag in even though there's a statistical advantage of doing so this is a guy who performs and plays in his own way he's got his own style and i think that's fantastic because he trusts it and he doesn't care what he looks like. And here's the thing, whenever you see one of these viral clips of him swinging and his unusual technique, there's one thing which I always, always notice. If one of the clips is just as they cut to him on one of the TV uh, graphics, one thing you'll notice is he's never over par. He's never, ever over par. Now, obviously, that's a sweeping statement. Obviously, he is over par at times, but he's won twice on the Japanese tour, and he's a legit player. I mean, this guy can score. And this is something which I, like I said, admire about him, and I wish I could take maybe a little bit more into my own game about actually trusting my technique and loving my technique enough to go out and shoot these good scores and not worrying about what people think. It's big inspiration, this guy. So Ho Sung Choi, good luck when you play. Hopefully the uh, petition online to get in the Waste Management Open in Phoenix as well comes to fruition and you get an invite into that tournament as well. We need more characters in this game. We need more interest being generated. And this guy, he has the potential to do that. 
But as always, guys, what do you think about the Fisherman Swing? What do you think about this invite? Do you think it is literally just a play to try and get people watching? Or is this guy a genuine contender? And last but not least, Titleist have released AP2 and AP3 in a limited black edition. And there is something about irons that are good looking already when they're released in black. I mean, they just look un unbelievably sexy and I'm going to try and find a few examples of when that happens about irons that are brought out in black that just look absolutely amazing and while I leave you with those stunning images guys thank you so so much for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already follow me on my other social media platforms as well and as always please comment on everything that we've discussed in today's show this is all about learning it's all about sharing as well so guys thank you so much for watching and we'll see you down here next time Mm, those irons. Oh, those irons in the hands of the fishermen.